let me get into the main pieces of advice that I want to put out there. Number one, look in all places. The 9070 XT that I have right here, I got this from B&H Photography. A lot of people don't check there, even though it is a fairly large retailer. You know, make sure you check there. Check Micro Center, check Amazon, check Newegg, and check MSI's website. I saw the 5070 12 gigabyte was in stock at MSRP like weeks ago for hours just on MSI's website. You know, check Dell. Dell sometimes sells random stuff, I think like even graphics cards from their own website. Check Best Buy. I just named it yeah, seven places that you can check. And I doubt that's absolutely everywhere. And other countries outside the US, obviously it will vary, but that's, that's point number one. Obviously there's also eBay, but that's more looking at the used market, which I don't think the used market based on looking around a little bit is particularly amazing right now, but that fluctuates. I think checking eBay for comparable used cards, if you are absolutely in need of a new one is also a good place to check, uh, you know, because that goes in and out of having being good deals compared to the new market. That gets me to point number two, accept a good deal. If you're desperate, don't insist on a perfect one. Too many people let great prevent good. And right now I got this 9070 XT for 750. That's the same price as a MSRP 5070 Ti. No one can get for the same performance, same amount of RAM probably better drivers, you know, like, do we wish it was $600? Yes, but don't wait until it's $1,200 potentially, you know? And and I think that's a very important rule that a lot of people miss. Yeah. I, <laughs> and uh, another piece of advice that just popped in my head. I mean, we do have micro centers around right now pop into a micro center if you're in town or if you can go to one. <laughs> yeah. Um, so point number three then is, and I think this is another important one that people forget, consider what you can sell your outgoing product for. So a reason I accepted the 3070, well, actually in 2021, I had the 3070 because I wanted to chase test Ampere for this YouTube channel. So that's a reason I was willing to buy it even a hundred dollars over MSRP. But honestly, it was a side grade really from the Radeon seven, ultimately an upgrade in gaming and productivity, but not a total upgrade because at half the RAM, but I was able to sell that Radeon 7 for triple the MSRP, two grand. I was able to sell a Radeon 7 I paid $700 for, for $2,000 on eBay. And I made money going to a over, you know, overpriced 3070. That's another reason to pay attention to the used market is if the used market is in a particularly inflated state, that's the time to consider getting a new car too. Like if you have a 6800 XT right now, that's not really that much. I think it's more expensive than what you, what you could have bought it for in 2023. So you might end up making money off of that if you ended up buying in like 2022, 2023 when the market was okay for used cards. <laughs> so yeah, you can make end up netting $70 on that somehow and putting that into your fresh new 20% above MSRP and 9070 XD. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it, this mostly right now would apply to people that have graphics cards with enough VRAM, like eight gigabyte cards are not selling well on eBay right now for the most part, for obvious reasons. The 3090 is selling used for if it, 800 to a thousand dollars. So consider this, if I go to tech power up right now, and see how that compares to a 9070 XT. 9070 XT is listed as 20% uh, more performance, 21% more performance. But then also keep in mind that this thing uses substantially less energy and will probably age much faster than that. So you could sell your 3090 right now uh, for $1,000 and make a few hundred dollars getting a stronger card. That's exactly what I did from Radeon 7 to 3070. The, if you have a more than enough VRAM, this is actually a pretty good time to upgrade because you, if you're going to sell your old card. Yeah, and with something like that, maybe you're compromising on VRAM a bit. But uh, I don't know, in these trying times, maybe 16 gigabytes for the next few years, especially if you're making money is enough. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it's not like it's going to run out of RAM for the next three years. And I would assume within the life of the card, there will be better deals. And if you need more RAM, you can upgrade by then for a more reasonable price. But take the win, you know, take the W now.
if you can get the W now. I actually would say this could be a fourth point. Um, if I really want to get a graphics card for MSRP on release, I think I can do it. I know that I believe it's like 8 a.m., depending on your time zone. Newegg will list the new cards, and their search function is good. So go to Newegg. Their search function is good. Search, boom, get it. I got many cards that sold out within an hour on launch day on Newegg because of that. Now, when it comes to Amazon, they tend to list it at the same time-ish, but their search function is horrible. So you are going to want to do research the night before on like search terms or like sometimes people discover the page before it goes live. Have that link ready for Amazon. You don't need to worry about that with Newegg. You do need to worry about that with Amazon. And then also Best Buy tends to list stuff sometimes at the same time, but often just randomly later in the day. So that would be the one you want to refresh along with Newegg though, because Newegg We'll have some people cancel orders and there's usually like an hour later, one or two pop up again. And so like knowing all of these things that I am saying, I think you could get them. And knowing these details actually is half of the reason you can sometimes get them if you really want them. Yeah. And I would just say to add to that with all of these websites, especially during launches or restocks when their websites are likely to act like they've, well, it's a self-imposed DDoS essentially. Uh, when that happens, uh, you know, don't leave the website. Keep trying to get it into your cart. To keep trying to buy it until uh, it kicks it out of your cart or you're auto signed out or whatever. Because what will end up happening is if you it says you bought it or something and it doesn't actually exist, you just will put have that money returned to you if it was even charged at all. <laughs> yeah. Like as assuming there isn't something where you'll max out a credit card immediately, but you probably won't with the level of money we're talking about here. Yeah, don't don't risk overdrafting your bank account or something, obviously. <laughs> you can just try to buy a bunch, yeah, or double down and you will get the money back or be able to cancel it within an hour if you accidentally bought two. Until you have it in your hands, working, no issues in your PC, I would not stop. You can always cancel the pre-order. I don't think we're at this point yet, but uh, if we truly get to a dire point in the market, uh, the last piece of advice I would say is, and this, again, this is like a few months down the road, assuming things keep getting worse, eh, be less exacting, I think, if uh, in the cards you get, like if you just need 16 gigabytes of RAM at a certain point, if it gets bad enough, get the card that the, the cards that are available that have 16 gigabytes of RAM and ideally the future features you want. That's why I say like, if it's a $500, 50, 60 TI, 16 gigabyte, I would prefer you get bent over the barrel with an extra $70 wasted on that. than spend $800 on a 7,900 XTX. When, if we're being honest in a few years, prices will go back down. This piece of content is brought to you by the fans that support the independent journalism of Moore's Law is Dead on Patreon. And it does need supporting from personal attacks from tech elites that get mad when we tell you that they are lying to gamers and their own shareholders to legal attacks from mega corporations that cost the team time and money. This is expensive and often very stressful work. And it's work that doesn't depend on access journalism nor depend on NDAs or agreements that would sanitize our opinions and hold us back. No, nothing holds us back and we are in independently funded, and we use said funding to do things like pay professional renderers to show you products before they come out so that the sources that provided us the original pictures don't get in trouble. Or we also create bonus content like Die Shrinks, where you have videos and interviews coming out multiple times a month exclusively to reward our patrons with the extra content that we know they would like to see, whether it's inside scoops or more in-depth conversation and stuff that we just know wouldn't profit if we put it out publicly, but it doesn't need to profit for our fans on Patreon because it is self-funded. And so if you want any of that bonus content or you want to support the independent journalism of Moore's Law is Dead, or honestly, if you just want to support me, Dan, Gerard, Carbon Cry, or Jesse and Maurice so that we have food on the table every day, consider supporting Moore's Law is Dead on Patreon. And to those that already support us there, I'll see you on the Discord.